after multiple failed attempts of a live stream, I'm just going to put out a video. I think that's probably going to be the easiest thing to do. Um, so what is up, everybody? This is, of course, your boy Bernie here. Hopefully I'm not muted. But if you are here on the charts, please remember to hit that like button. Also remember to hit that subscribe button if you're new. Of course, you know, I am a big Celtics fan. I know my boy Tyrese is. Um, and many of us talk about the Boston Celtics because, again, they are a very great organization. And I want them to succeed. They're one of my favorites. I loved watching the uh, Ray Allen Boston Celtics with Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and Rajon Rondo, and that was were fun times, but it seems like those days are long gone, and we now need to focus on how to get better from this Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum era, along with Brad Stevens, and seeing how we can actually get the championship. Now, um, I've talked about on this YouTube channel, live streaming for about you know a couple months now, about the Celtics' inability to get the superstars that they need. It seems like they have been so close to pull the trigger on actually getting some of these guys, but unfortunately, each and every time we try to get close and we try to actually get some of these players, we unfortunately falter and we don't grab the players that we need. We fall to you know mid-table, we get to the NBA Finals, but we don't actually catapult ourselves to that W. We end up like losing these games. It's just one of those scenarios where... I want the Boston Celtics to actually get these guys. I want the Boston Celtics to actually, you know, try to acquire some of these players that we need. I mean, this to me is a frustrating situation for the Boston Celtics to always be put in where I'm trying to get these guys to actually get some of these players that we need. I mean, Aaron Gordon is kind of the rumored player. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit. According to ESPN, some sources from, you know, uh, The Athletic and all these other places is that the Celtics would be interested in trading two unprotected first round picks for Aaron Gordon. Um, I just think that kind of shows the ambition of the Celtics at this point. You know, Aaron Gordon is a great player. I think he's a good player. But is he going to be a player that, you know, tilts the scale for the Celtics to actually win a championship? My answer shortly is no, because I don't think that his interior offense is something that you know makes him special. What makes him special is that he's able to be a stretch shooter, and maybe that's the reason why. I mean, at the end of the day, with the frustrating part that I would say about this whole thing is that you know we're looking to get some of these players, we're looking to get um, you know much better quality, we're looking to get much better demand out of these guys, but unfortunately, uh, the Celtics seem to always just be two or three steps behind. They don't seem to always want to be innovative and try and get new players or try to make these trades happen. And instead, we're left in the situation where the Boston Celtics now have to kind of settle for some of these players instead of actually demanding that we get some of these guys. I mean, again, you know, I want to see us get, um, you know, many of these players. I want to see us get Anthony Davis. I want to see us get Kawhi Leonard. But for some reason, we were never in the sweepstakes with him. I understand with Kawhi Leonard, it's a little different. Uh, but Anthony Davis, we could have definitely gotten him, and we just didn't pull the trigger. I know that would have been the loss of Jalen Brown, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, maybe we can convince Anthony Davis to stay. Like we have the pieces for it, and instead, you know, we could have kept a guy like Terry Rozier. We could have kept some of these other players. We could have even kept Gordon Hayward. Even you know, Gordon Hayward. You know, as much as I crapped on him a long time ago, he's been playing really well. And now with the Lamella Ball injury that we talked about yesterday on the stream, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. Um, you know, what does that do for Gordon Hayward? Does that mean his production goes up? Does that mean his production goes down? Who knows? But at this time and point, the Celtics right now have missed on two opportunities. We could have kept Terry Rozier. We could have kept uh, Gordon Hayward. I know that, you know, the Kyrie Irving thing was kind of a, a freak thing. Like, it wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. Um, but unfortunately, it just didn't work out for us at the end. And it's just, you know, both parties just didn't find common ground. And, you know, I think Kyrie Irving beats to the to the march of his own beat. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you just let him go and see where he goes. And he decided to go to Brooklyn with Kevin, Gar Kevin Durant and try and win a championship. Um, and again, I do think that this is another scenario where um, the Boston Celtics have yet again, put themselves in position to not be a contender for the championship right now, the 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets and even the Milwaukee Bucks to some degree um, are in that contention they're actually fighting for that championship spot meanwhile we're still struggling to get to 500 i mean right now we are like fifth or sixth in the um in the conference and that's just not a good thing that's not a good sign for the boston celtics if we want to get to that next level like i said you know we've been there for these last couple of years it's been a little iffy but i just thought that we could have actually done that. i thought we could have actually been in a scenario and a situation where we could have actually tried to contend for that championship but instead we lost to the Miami Heat when, you know, I felt like Jason Tatum kind of played a little too much iso ball. And now, you know, that's kind of our offense. And, you know, with Brad Stevens rumored to go to Indiana, which I wouldn't blame him if he wanted to go. Um, the Celtics right now are just in no position to be acquiring players or in no, no position to be uh, kind of 
in that near contention spot because we've lost so many assets. We've lost so many talented players um, throughout the whole years. You know, we lost guys like Al Horford. We lost uh, Aaron Baines. Like, we lost so many guys. We lost so many opportunities. So it's one of those things where you look at the situations, you look at what's going on, and again, um, you know, I just want to know, like, what what's the what's the scenario for the Celtics to actually win a championship? What's the scenario for the Celtics to actually do something? Because right now, it's not looking very good. It's not looking promising. And, and we're just, again, in that sort of scenario in that boat where we try to win the championship. We try to go for it. But instead, right now, we're just looking at kind of being numpty about it. And numpty meaning, like, we're just kind of being sitting on our hands and sitting on our hands and not really making moves. And this is the reason why I think Danny Ainge needs to go. Because, you know, the one thing that I will say is that, you know, Danny Ainge hasn't really done anything for us in terms of the, the playoffs, hasn't done anything for us in terms of getting us any kind of aspirational players. Instead, we get guys like Aaron Naismith, Peyton Pritchard, Romeo Langford. We're still waiting on Romeo Langford. It's like, dude, at what point do we just cut our losses with that kid? Um, not saying that he's a bad guy, but it's just one of those things that you just want to see. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we'll see what happens. You know, I want the Boston Celtics to acquire these players. Um in free agency, you know, Kyle Lowry could be another guy that we could get. I think he would be a great addition to our team, but we do need that interior guy. Um, unfortunately, there just hasn't been any of those guys out there. I mean, the only one is LaMarcus Aldridge, but I think he's probably going to go to Miami because uh, Miami right now is on a, on a little bit of a winning streak. They are, I believe, in fourth place. Um, and just kind of goes to show you the, the aspirations of where the Celtics were at a couple of years ago to where it's at right now, where it feels like we're just trying to – keep it all together with glue and duct tape and you know it's going to fall apart eventually and the question for me is going to be you know if it does fall apart eventually if it does get to a scenario where you know we see um you know Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum saying you know what I've had my time in Boston I'm just not going to stay any longer I wouldn't blame them to be honest because we haven't put them in the position we haven't put them in a place to where we could say yes you are going to win a championship with us because this is how the Celtics are going to win Instead, we're in this we're in another boat and scenario where the Celtics right now are just trying to survive. They're just trying to uh, stay in there. They're just they're not really trying to do anything else. And um, unfortunately, it's just a sad scenario to see. And you know, I want to see the Boston Celtics su succeed. I want to see them get those players that we desperately need in order to be that championship aspiration team again. I mean, we did it years ago with Kevin Garnett and and Paul Pierce. And, you know, and Ray Allen. And now it's like we don't even have that anymore. We traded all those assets. We got all those draft picks. You know, Danny Ainge had so many unprotected first round picks. Like Danny Ainge was the master negotiator. But what did that master negotiator get them? Yes, it got them Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But other than that, what else did it get them? Yes, you got your Kyrie, you got your Gordon Hayward, and it just didn't work out. It was a failed experiment. And instead of trying to trade some of these draft picks, like we had this Naismith draft pick, we could have traded this to get some sort of player, even if it was Aaron Gordon. You know, trade these two picks, see if you can't get another another decent player for you. And then again, you'll be in a scenario where you have Aaron Gordon now and you actually have these future draft picks where you can actually make some moves to get, you know, some some point guard play, um, you know, get some more guard defending. I mean, we could or maybe even more shooting because right now, you know, I don't think that we're shooting the ball the best. Um, and instead, we're just kind of in this scenario right now where the Boston Celtics just seem to just be sitting on their hands. They don't really care about a lot of this stuff. and. I want to see the Boston Celtics succeed. I want to see them get that championship. But how are they going to get that championship if the players that we have aren't even NBA championship players, right? Like none of these players are even remotely close to getting there. None of these players are remotely even close to even trying to try to get us a championship. And right now we are struggling to even contend. We're struggling to even do anything. And it's just one of those scenarios where, again, I hate talking about this every single time, but Danny Ames needs to retire. I don't care what happens. I don't care how it happens, but he just needs to retire because I don't think that he's necessarily the right guy for the job at the moment. We're seeing right now that he's swinging and missing on some of these free agents, and it's just causing us to be further back from where we were a couple years ago, which was, okay, I call this the oven bake process where, you know, it took us a couple years and then boom, we we're going to be NBA finals contenders. And I thought last year was the year to do it, but unfortunately it just didn't work out. And then Gordon Hayward left. We got an exception with him just because he got hurt. And, you know, we're left with just $28 million to spend, but we don't have anything to spend it on. And basically, it's just going to go away if we don't make a trade. Again, you know, the trade, mar the trade deadline, I believe, is less than a week away. So we'll see how the trade deadline goes for the NBA teams. Will the Celtics make a trade? Who knows? But all I know is this. Aaron Gordon, I like the kid. I think he's a good player. But is he going to get us a championship? 
No. Uh, and until the Celtics realize that they need to start trading for some superstar talented players, then I think that's the way that they'll they'll understand. And that's the only way that I think that the Celtics really will say, okay, we need to reexamine our trade uh, our trade stuff and you know try and make some moves and maneuver that way. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it here for the charge. I do apologize that I was not able to live stream it, um, but we will be live streaming back again tomorrow on Wednesday, getting back to some sort of regular schedule. But anyway, guys, like I said, my name is Bernie. Thank you once again for tuning into the charge. We'll catch you next time. Please remember to hit that like button. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.